It's the Ty and Matt Show with Matt and Ty. And we're doing it again. Like clockwork. Like clockwork. Oh my, it feels good to be back. It does. I always like rolling into a new podcast. It's like um, a, t- a way to uh, right the wrongs of the previous episodes. It's like a new slate. I like that. Yeah. It's like whatever happened in the last episode doesn't matter. It's what happens in this episode. And I think it's a good one. Oh, that's that's a beautiful way to look at it. And I'm really happy yeah. someone's looking at it like that because I am still... I'm still a little depressed on the last one with uh, with Phil Collins only because he, he kind of sounded like a like an alt right Stephen Hawking the whole interview because it was like you couldn't really like I think it still worked you could pretty much yeah. hear most of what he's saying but it's like some words would just pop out a little bit more and it, he'd be it'd be just a really robotic like uh, pro life or something and it's that's uh, if people were refraining from alcohol and. Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, no, I know. Yeah. I, we did our best. I, I thought it was a valiant effort on our part. He was very cool to us. Um, you know, being the professional podcasters that we are, I do think that we, you know, if he said something and we knew what he was saying, but maybe it wasn't clear uh, probably to the listeners, I think we did a good job of rehashing oh. what he said just to kind of make sure it was clear. Not to pat ourselves on the back. No, or no, no, Pat. No, 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 Pat. I had a way. I thought that was award-winning material right there. Just the yeah, because I, I too. my favorite was there was a stretch where I didn't hear. I think it was when we asked him what what his hobbies were, and there was mm-hmm. a stretch where I I did not understand a fucking word personally, and I'm just yeah. like trying to politely get you know like let him talk and get to the end and all that. And somehow it was uh, it reminded me of, like King of the Hill that one character that just like mumbles the whole time, yeah, and somehow man, you understood everything. And I could see you just like rephrase it so well. And I'm like, thank fucking God for this guy. This is why I need a co-host. Dude, well, you know what? That's why you should always podcast in pairs. Because fortunately, in that instance, while you heard nothing, I managed to pick out the words genealogy and stamp collecting. And I was able to (laughs) ride that that baby to the finish line. That's right. I, I, if we ever wrote a book on like podcast, like the Ty and Matt podcasting encyclopedia, or, yeah. uh, it, I don't know. Fucking God, I, my words aren't. I don't know what the word would be, but you know what I mean. It's a Ty and Matt book that tells you how to podcast. How to podcast. Yeah. Turn on mic, talk. Talk. But one That's of the, one, one, one of the things would be like always podcast in pairs. Always, always pod in pairs. Always. Oh God. Yeah. Pod Wait, in pairs. What's another P? perpetually pod in pairs perpetually pod in pairs if you're going to do it because you you need if you're going to teach people things like that you need mnemonic devices that i don't know why like they they say they work i don't think they work that well but i think people just like to have them in their back pocket like guys just remember if you're going to start your own show remember the three p's the three p's like a a slide comes up yep and then we, we alternate podcast and pairs they're like but that's ppip and i'm like well no the the eye is just an assistant in this whole thing. What's important are the three P's. I love like a Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross style like podcasting lesson where it's like, oh, you think you're man enough to podcast? You call mm-hmm. yourself a fucking man? Yeah. What are the What are the three P's? And uh, you know, I don't know if you've seen that speech. That's a great one though. I haven't. Is, is, the, is the that Alec the Baldwin, Jack- Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross speech? Yeah, no, I listen to it every time. I'm about to start this podcast. Just get, get fired up. Get fucking. Fu- I'm like, gonna run through a wall. There are so many holes in the wall behind my computer because of how fucking fired up I get. Yeah, you need to get pumped to do. I mean, I think we're doing our first lesson now, which is you know, get pumped, per- perpetually podcast in pairs. But yeah, yeah, dude, get pumped. That's another P. Get yeah, uh, p- pumped for pod. That's PFP. Pump, pump for get, pod. You got to bring that energy, folks. I, I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear that we do every week. I'm exhausted. There's one thing we do: it's deliver energy for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'm exhausted after every episode because I leave it all on the court for you people, and I wish you'd yep. I'd wish you'd appreciate it more. Yeah. 
you're you're like uh you're like Michael Jordan, you know, you leave it on the court. I'm like Paul Pierce. I shit my pants and get taken off in a wheelchair, but then triumphantly come back with a fresh pair of shorts and finish the game. He did that, you know. Let's set up a tie, a tie and Matt conference. Uh, I'm down. Let's, you know, we can have Phil Collins as a guest speaker. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. I, I, I'm already liking this. Phil what Collins. a what a crowd that would draw. The tie and Matt audience plus Phil Collins bring the the prohibition party to the mat like that. Like I mean. Th- th- it would be nuts. I uh, like that. That's what this we would, show needs to be. We would do just... it in Vegas. We would do it in Vegas. Oh yeah. We'd have our, our casino goggles. Yes, that's right. Yes. And masks <laughs> and, and everything. That's correct. We'd have our casino goggles and look, maybe during the day it's a little dry. You know, we're talking about podcasting, you know, we're, yeah. we're, we're delivering the peas, but at night it's going to get fucking wild. We'll have some, you know, diet Coke. So yeah. maybe a lime squeezed in there yeah because hey, uh, phil doesn't for, drink um, for some of the later sessions you got to be over 18 yeah in fact you probably have to be over 21 to even go to the casino let's be honest about that but those late night sessions get a little blue mm. you know what i'm talking about a little edgy a little edgy hey hey what are you guys yeah. doing here yeah i like that uh, can we uh, can we work on that do it. Yeah, the second, the first time we have a listener that hails from Las Vegas, uh, uh, let's go. I, I, I still like. I, I think that would be a great stop on the inaugural Ty and Matt World Tour. Well, okay. So um, what do we we have? Ty and Matt conference. We got to set that up. I don't know if this yeah. election cycle we're gonna have. Uh, it's a lot of paperwork, but we need to get the well, Ty and Matt party up and going. Yeah, we, we missed several primaries already, so well, probably gonna have to. We're our own party, so. We just have to get well, delegates. That's true. We need delegates. We really need delegates. Well, well, in the primaries, we make our own delegates, don't we? Um, I don't know how that works. See, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of question marks there. I don't think that's going to happen before November. No, no, no. We, I, I, maybe we be, can get Nick on that and get the intern. Yeah, yeah. it'd be cool, like, to start a party and just have like one super cool delegate that's like, I got you guys. Yeah. They're they're like, you know, I'm not going to matter in this election yeah. so like i'll just throw he's like the cool stepdad like you. hey if you want to drink at yeah. the house you know just you can make sure it's here make sure you know it's what? here no one drives okay look if you want to dig through the, the medicine cabinet i'm not judging you bud just keep it within yeah. the house just don't touch the percocets no perks no perks oh. huh there are no perks to perks isn't that what dad always says no. so that's it well we already did we did say perks it's one of the piece yeah <laughs> uh yeah so time at conference time at party we need a third one because it's going to fucking irk me if we don't have like a third thing on the agenda. We had the time map. Did we call it the time map pride parade or just the time map parade? I don't I don't think we can we had, do the time at pride parade because that no. we might be we might be dipping in a, you know, a, a, another community there. Well, you can have pride in anything. You could like we're proud of our podcast. <laughs> and, and and all like parades. By the way, parades, worst form of entertainment. I know. Um, but, but you know, people people still will stand there and watch. Like, if, if you say, hey, we're having a parade, people are going to walk in lines. Yeah. And there's going to be some cars There'll driving on the roads. There'll be a float yeah. or two. Yeah. People will sit, you know, for hours in advance, hoping to get the best view of, like, you know, a just okay high school marching band. We should get that set up. We um, wh- where do they do the uh, Macy's Day Parade? Is that uh, it's Herald Her- Square? Her- oh, Herald Square. Yeah, I'm not sure the exact. If we can't road. afford that, maybe we can kind of go. I don't know, one fifty fifth. I'm thinking we can't. We should we should find another like <laughs> Herald Square, but it's in like it's like, like some small town. Yeah. I guess. that'd be hilarious. <laughs> you got like you pick a place where your presence, even if you're not that big of a deal just the presence that you know there's an event coming to town would be enough to get like tons of publicity by 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 that standard like you'd be on the front page be like some podcast is having a parade in town like we don't understand why but you would get so much local news coverage it'd be unbelievable yeah because in a town like that they'd be fucking stoked dude i just want to have a chiron that says matt regal podcaster Oh yeah. Well, you can like how how sick would that be? I mean, you could just get like business cards that say that right now. Yeah, but you know, it's 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 one thing if you make it for yourself, but like when it's bestowed upon bestowed you, bestowed upon by you. like KRGZ and 
wherever the fuck Oklahoma. That just like makes you feel good. Well, okay, so we need we, we have that on the docket then. So yeah, long term. Uh, Nick, take notes. Uh, we we have time at party. We got to figure out the details for uh, 2024. I mean, we could yeah. go. We could start Congress. You know, we could start local 2022. Ah, aim high. Okay, presidential 2024. If we make it to 2024, um, then we have Tyne Mac Conference. That's going to be yeah. big. T- Ty and, can we call it Tyne Mac Con? Tyne Mac Con. A Tyne Mac Con, uh, where, you know, if all else fails, we'll have Phil Collins there as a speaker. Yep. Maybe he can pull some strings for us in uh, Vegas. Um, and then we're going to have to get the Tyne Mac Parade, which, uh, honestly, if we did it in New Orleans, it's a lot easier. Done. Oh, yeah. Parades just occur there. Yeah, I, well, I'm, like, I, I'm pretty sure that's like a Hannibal Burris bit where it's like 500 bucks. You just have a fucking parade. Parade. <laughs> you you just need 500 bucks and like a couple hundred beads. A couple hundred beads. And just start throwing a free beads. hour. You know, ideally right. a free hour. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> I think we have long term goals here. Oh, absolutely. We have some long term things. If anyone has any connections. To those things and can like pull some strings please you know you know it's all about who you know well yeah and like i said we will do pretty much anything like if it's like hey be the keynote speakers at this you know commencement like we, yeah <laughs> I, I would i'll talk it. at your clock your co- closet what the fuck God i'll talk at your closet seriously right. i'll talk at your closet sorry i know that was a slip of the tongue but seriously though uh yeah yeah, yeah, I'll talk in your closet. You all right? Yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to take this serious. You know, I've been doing my red leather, yellow leather, you know, my, uh-huh. my tongue exercises and just to yep. fucking have that slip up. What is it? We're like <sighs> 10 minutes into this thing and I already fucking blow it? Yeah, you know, it's it's a shame. It's a shame we're not recording this and, you know, could like do another, another <laughs> take or edit it out or something. But, yeah, hold on, let's you see. know, let's it see. happens to the best. Let's but. do another take. Okay. Hold on. Let me just say it, and then I'll put it in, and I'll remember this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me Do just that. Say, Do that. Uh, what I, I said, but it's supposed to be yeah. Commencement. Commencement. Good job. See, seamless. Yeah, that's fine. I'll I'll fix that. Um, have you have you seen this uh this pandemic thing? No. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is like the thing that's raging the internet now. Oh man, it's broken the internet. Like if you go on Reddit, it's all over the place. Uh, Plandemic is a documentary uh, about, as you can imagine, a planned pandemic, uh, which mm. is COVID nineteen for the sake of this documentary. Okay, uh, and it's got you know this woman that I, I guess you know she was like a scientist, uh, Judy um, Mekovitz, Mekovitz. Uh, I don't yeah, know, whatever you know, some fucked up okay. last name. And yeah, 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 yeah. Judy. Judy, we'll call her Judy. Um, and you know, apparently she's like the world's like world-renowned scientist. Even though the only, if you look it up, the only person that said that is like Robert Kennedy Jr., who's a lawyer and not even a scientist. Mm-hmm. But she's world-renowned for something. And it's like twenty-five minutes, and she's just going in. And it's like you know, Fauci. Fauci's a fucking you know, he's a, a guy. He's up to no good, and you got to keep an eye on him. And like, I like look, doctor on. Doctor Shade like that. That, I, that is no doubt. entertaining. No doubt. Yeah. Doctor versus Doctor is, you know, it could be something, you know, Hollywood could bake up. But I look, here's the thing. I like some of the points that are made fine, you know, but like the problem that I have with it is it's like it's so you get through it and it's just so easily like debunked. Yeah. Which is kind of a problem. And, and apparently she's a big speaker at like anti vaccine conferences that's like her mo is anti-vaccine so obviously this fucking yeah. pandemic is not what she's about no uh the whole anti I, I there was a time where i was afraid that my doctor thought i was an anti-vaxxer because I, I was turned down <laughs> flu fun. shots yeah every anytime every year i'd go in there and they'd be like do you want a flu shot and i'd, I'd be like no and i don't know like i don't know why i thought that because that's not really what the anti-vaccine like it I don't believe that if I'm going to get the flu shot, I'm going to get autism. No, I just, I, I probably I don't already have flu it. shot. Well, it was just like, I never really like, I never get sick really. Like no. I, I, I'll have days where I don't feel well, but I, I haven't had like a sustained illness. I, I had a cold briefly in college. I got day quill and that was the end of it. 
Um, so I just have a kick-ass immune system, and I like to just kind of let it ride. <laughs> so I like I, I kind of play with just let it ride, you know. And this year I got uh, luckily. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. I got talked into it this year because I was saying to the doctor, and he he was he was up front with me. I said, I said, listen, doc. I said, I'm a pretty healthy 24 year old fella. I said, do I need? Do you think I need this shot? And you know what he told me? He said, hell he yeah. He said, he did. He said, hell yeah. No, I got that <laughs> shot and I left. No, but he goes, like every year with the flu shot, they just kind of guess what the flu is going to be like. Yeah. And, and some pro- years it works and some you, years doesn't. He probably gave you COVID-19. That's what Ju- Judy would say. Probably. Honestly, that's what she did. One of her claims on her website was like like around 2015, 2016, the, the flu vaccine then was COVID-19 uh, and they in- distributed it in Italy. And that's why Italy's getting torn apart. And then she's like, what activates it is like a face mask. And essentially, you're just constantly breathing in the virus. This isn't Listen, in I, the doc. This is like on her website. Oh, her website? Okay. I was, like, I like a conspiracy theory as I, much as the next guy. Dude, I would love if this doc was, trust me, every ounce of me wants to fucking believe what she's saying. Yeah. Because it's like, <laughs> look, I would love it to be that simple and straightforward. That's the thing about conspiracy theories is they make sense of things that, or they attempt to make sense of things that don't necessarily make sense. Like people don't want to believe that some random guy shot the president of the United States in 1963. No, that was the CIA. Definitely. That's what I'm saying. People don't want to believe it. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't seem like something that could really happen easily. I Look, I think some so conspiracies, people try to make up an excuse. some conspiracies make sense. And some of the points she brings up, I, I think there's some validity to it, but like what they do, which is like what Michael Moore does. And a lot of these yeah. fucking, you know, political documentaries is they take a thing that has you know has truth to it there is some fact behind it but then they fucking just go off the deep end and it gets to a point where it's like so sensationalized like she talked about um you know they they arrested her they arrested her because they planted document like these documents on her so like i'm looking this up and and so you get to sciencemag.org this is an article back in 2011 and it talks about Mm -hmm. it It goes the arrest of judy mikovitz or whatever refers uh comes from a a paper published in 2009 uh the claim to have found a link between xenotropic uh, this is a lot of shit here so essentially Mm -hmm. the nuts and bolts of it is that she gets fired because uh, it could not be replicated, the study she did that was, like, groundbreaking. No other lab, including her own, could replicate the results, which in science is no good. It, you no. know, that's the whole base of the science is that, you know, for a, a theory to become a fact, and even just to be a theory, it has to be played out a few times. It has to be proved. Um, so she gets fired, she gets whacked, and then she takes some of her notes home. But technically the notes are owned by the company, so then they put a, they take them back. They threaten to arrest her and they put a restraining order on her. But if you watch the doc, it's like, nope, it's planted, and they fucking bust in with guns yeah. blazing, and they like, yeah, it's just a lot, dude. It's oh, totally. That's the thing. Like, there's always for most of the conspiracies that are out there, the conspiracy theories. There's so much that has to happen that it's just like inconceivable that that's how how they well, someone brought up a great point where be. it's like even if you want okay let's play ball so even if you want to say all right cdc compromise nih compromise let's say most public uh health departments compromise let's say that's the case mm-hmm. what about the thousands upon thousands of other public and private institutions that are also doing research on COVID-19 like how much yeah. how much money does Monsanto have are you saying that they've just bought everyone off everyone's yeah. paid off yeah that's the thing like it that's just inconceivable how much money that would take and a lot of the conspiracies that theories that are out there also require you know some of these institutions and governments and things like that to be evil geniuses and complete morons at the same time. Yeah. Like, I don't get how that, that can't really be the case. You need like complete stupidity on behalf of some. And like I said, evil genius levels of intelligence from others, sometimes in the same like spheres, just doesn't make sense. But you know, what is a great documentary that talks. So it, it's the, uh, I just blanked on the name. It's, I think it's called Beyond the Curve. It's about flat earthers. It's on Netflix. Oh, boy. 
now and what's great about it is it's not really it's not trying to convince you that the world is flat instead it's basically a documentary about people that think the world is flat and why do they think this and why are they so you know so committed to those beliefs um and then you can kind of just expand upon that thing and use it as a way to look at conspiracy theories as a whole it, it's really interesting look I'm, um, I'm always game for a good conspiracy theory you know when someone oh yeah, me told too. me to check out pandemic i was all about it and you know like i said there is validity to some of it like i, I yeah. know there's plenty of doctors that are like a little lost in what the fuck's going on with like the cdc recommendations i understand covid19 deaths are fudged a little bit you know if you die mm-hmm. you know if you get in a car accident <laughs> And you get dragged into the ER and, you know, let's say you just don't make it because it was too nasty of an accident. They'll just put it as COVID-19 because it's like, hey, you know, we just didn't have the resources to focus on you because of this. And it's like, yeah. OK, well, now these are indirect deaths and you now you're inflating the numbers just a little bit. I mean, just a cu- couple of weeks ago, Pennsylvania changed 200 deaths that were originally attributed to COVID-19. They were taken out of the count. Like it's it's a weird situation. But yeah, what's called Plandemic, if you want to check it out. Plandemic. I love a good doc. I love a good documentary. You, you can, yeah, I mean, it, you can't get it on YouTube. The thing with YouTube, YouTube's, you know, they're fucking ridiculous. Google just likes to just take anything down that they yeah. just can't agree with. So it, it keeps getting taken down, which just, you know, it adds fuel to the fire. So now people are like, look, fucking Google doesn't want the truth out there. Yeah. And that doesn't help. I mean, fucking no. YouTube should just leave it up. But you can you can watch it. I think it's like plandemicmovie.com. Mm-hmm. You can watch it oh. there. Well, check it out. I might have to check it out. Like I said, I love a good doc. You know who else likes a good doc? Our guest this week. Oh, boy, does he like it. Yeah, we have uh, we have a great dude on. We have Travis Preston, who uh, he has produced a, a couple, I believe a couple docs. But the, the one I got to work on with him was Race to Tokyo. Which, uh, I mean, he describes it better, but I'm going to butcher it here. Uh, it's a doc about Jared Wallace, a Paralympic athlete that wants to make the world's fastest running blade, partnered with uh, this company, I believe, called Cyborg over in Tokyo, Japan. Really cool stuff. I, I, I did, he gave us a link, right? He ended up. Yeah, he did. Because, like, we get through this we, whole we interview. We talked him into it. Yeah, we, we <laughs> talked like 30 minutes about Race to Tokyo, and then he's like, yeah, no, you can't watch it. And I'm like, really, dude? I think people want to watch it now. We're going to yeah, talk we, about we, it. We, we talked him into dropping the uh, the plug. It's at the end. Uh, yeah, it was a good interview. Uh, yeah. And I think Check. all you folks in podcast land will enjoy it. Yeah, please, please. L- ladies and gentlemen, it's Travis Preston. And here we are with Travis Preston. Travis, what is going on? Oh, you know, just living the dream, baby. Aren't we all? <laughs> Boy, I love the enthusiasm right away. <laughs> That's kind of tie and mat energy that I love to hear. I'm so happy you're with us today. Uh, Travis, for the sake of us never doing research on anyone, what's what's your story? What are you about? Tell, tell us what you're about. All right. Um, where to begin? Well, it all started in the womb. Um, wow. of course yeah, good place classic. for it to start it is classic. the only place i would say um no mm-hmm. but i'm a filmmaker documentaries are my speciality and i'm from atlanta and uh yeah obviously ty that's how you and i met when you moved up from florida we worked on a little indie feature together bit of a rest in peace yeah bit of a, <laughs> bit of a people will understand that later i don't know what actually happened but well that'll be a thing we'll talk about yeah. later in this interview <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm looking forward to that part yeah i'm sure one day it'll see the light of day um yeah one day but yeah so now i am uh well kind of forced into a new uh period of my career which is where i sit in my room and make youtube videos oh fucking yeah yeah, <laughs> Fuck yeah, yeah. dude it's basically the that's same the future <laughs> that well that was the future in 2007 being a youtuber Oh yeah, now you got to be a tick. Have you thought about getting on TikTok? Um, I have thought about it for about a quibby. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. oh, okay. Oh, okay. This guy's in the know. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> no idea what that oh. is, I, but I think it's a ten minute. I think it's a ten minute video. A quibby, right? I think so. Yeah. And I know, I know, you hold your phone in portrait 
like portrait style. That's all I know about Quibi. And, and, that's and speaking of Quibi, and now that we're organically here, uh, vi- visit Quibi.com <laughs> backslash Ty and Matt. You'll get 10% off your first month's subscription after that full price. Uh, terms and conditions do apply. Yeah, um, they're, just, they're sponsoring everybody these days. It's just I know it. It's getting the word out. What, 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 would you take them as a sponsor? Because I, I remember, so back back when we were on Brief Candle, you you talked about this a little bit where you were working on a doc that I, I want to go into, Race to Tokyo, mm-hmm. uh, and the process of like trying to get sponsors mm. on that. Would you take, would you, if Quibi approached you and they're like, hey, we know you had this like 90 minute idea for like Race to Tokyo, but can you make it like 10? Would you do it? Yes. <laughs> it, are, they paying, <laughs> are they paying me money? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't actually understand how Quibi's uh, business model works, but I, I mean, I assume. Yeah, sponsorship. I assume that means financial or other uh, value of some kind that they're giving me. And so, yeah, I mean, the movie's basically. I mean, the ten-minute movie is basically already made. So, you know, why not? How long was how, how long was the uh, POC or I, proof of concept? Excuse me. Oh, Sorry. look at someone's throwing around yeah, industry hey, terms. Look at hey. that. No big deal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's about 15 minutes. Um, yeah. You're gonna have to cut that down for Quibi. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, if, <laughs> hey, if they approach me, then we'll we'll figure we'll cross that that bridge when it gets here. Unless you it's, go to series, you you could you could go to series oh, true. and have a, a, a one and a half of Quibis. Wait, what? One and a half. Oh, Quibis. a Quibi series. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <This is gross. laughs> No, I, no, I like how we're, 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 we're talking about this platform. None of we all admit we're not familiar with. Yeah. So we, we've decided that a ten, the ten oh minute God. increments are now quibbies. Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, well, we're just six quibbies in an hour. It, it, that's just a quib. One's a quib. <laughs> multiples quibby. Quibby. <laughs> Quibby. <laughs> Quit fibbing the quib, Ty. All right, all right. Can we, I, I want to. So, race to Tokyo was a thing that I, I worked on with you for a while, and I, personally, I still think it's a really awesome concept but for the sake of people not being able to see the proof of concept or the full feature uh explain what is race to tokyo okay so basically um it is a 15 minute documentary at this point that um follows an athlete named jared wallace uh he's a he's a paralympian so he's a single leg amputee and he's uh, training and, and preparing to compete in the 2020 paralympic games which we can get to later uh and he has this really cool relationship in japan with this engineer named ken endo and ken is like he he's um he's from japan but he you know went to mit um you know studied under hugh her who's like the godfather of modern prosthetics i mean this guy like knows his stuff and so together they sort of have come up with this idea that they want to take this design of the running blade that's been the design for the past, I don't know, since the 60s, I think. And they want to make it more accessible. They want to find new ways to innovate it, make it cheaper, make it um, you know, more customizable, and um, hopefully, you know, in their words, just change the world through this new piece of technology. That's a lot. It's a lot. Oh, boy, yeah. that's a lot. No. <laughs> That's that's incredible though. That's <laughs> that's probably the best description out of like working on it for like what three months. That's the best you've ever described Thank it you. right there. Thank you for yeah. noticing. I mean, it's probably I've done it probably a thousand times. So. I know I can I can tell. <laughs> so, uh, how how did you get the idea for Race to Tokyo? Like, what spurred that? Um, yeah, so I actually shot Jared's wedding. Jared's the athlete, um, and I, I met. I think I met them through. My girlfriend at the time, she introduced me to them, shot their wedding. Uh, you know, he and I hit it off, uh, came kind of friends. And then I like reached out to him about six, eight months later because I was I had some downtime and I was kind of looking for the next you know, thing that I wanted to invest my time in. And uh, I just thought about him and I called him and I was like, so, yeah, tell me a little bit more about this world that you're in. And eventually that sort of turned into Japan and sort of like the mobility revolution i guess that's kind of happening over there and in, in, in preparation for the games um and so yeah we ended up just taking a trip over and uh kind of spent all my savings maxed out the credit cards classic stuff um <laughs> and then and so yeah and then that's we shot it that was in 2017 wow that's fucking crazy <laughs> uh, but yeah well you went there you went there twice right 
Yeah, we went there in twenty in March of twenty seventeen. No, scratch that. We went there in March of twenty eighteen, and then we went back in November of twenty eighteen um for the for the actual shooting so we shot like all this footage for the proof of concept the first time we went over and then uh, we wanted to use that to kind of package it try to get some money to get the the feature film made by the time we went back over there no one had given us any money except some supporters and people had like chipped in to help and all that which was really cool but we decided all right well we're either gonna let this thing die or we're gonna finish it out and so we decided to go get more footage and um and yeah so we're basically left now with a 15 minute piece um, that does a pretty good job of standing on its own. It doesn't have like an ending um, because you don't know what's going to happen, but I think we've sort of tied it up in a nice enough bow where it could be sort of self-contained. Has, has COVID-19 bought you more time? Like if you did want to go ahead and I, I, I know it's kind of like a weird silver lining on everything, but do you feel like it bought you more time? I mean, it did, it, yeah, I mean, it, it did buy us more time in, in that, uh, you know, the, the Olympic Games are going to happen now for another year, maybe more, who knows what will happen. Um, but realistically, I think it just, it was kind of another sign that, you know, maybe we just, we leave it as it is. I mean, we've spent a lot of money and time on it, and it does do what it needs to do, which is to kind of get the word out about this effort that they're doing. And what's really cool is that, they actually have made the blade now. Um, They figured out a way to cut costs by like 30%. We have some footage of them at uh, the University of Georgia where Jared went to school, like trying it out and running with it. So what I'm thinking about doing is just tacking that ending on um, as sort of like an after credits catch up and then submitting it to festivals this year and then kind of just moving on. I mean, that's, is that, that's the usual move for like indie filmmaking though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Once the debt piles high enough to where you physically cannot see a way out at that point, you submit it to film festivals. Yeah. That's the, that's actually when you, that's when you finally become a filmmaker. Yes. It's uh, a yeah. debt to income ratio really needs to be like teetered in one way. Oh yeah. You cannot have good credit and be a, a filmmaker. You just can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so obviously it was like a humongous undertaking to go to Tokyo uh, and get all this stuff, put the story together and you know, I, it might not be a feature, but obviously there's gotta be some, like what's the biggest takeaway from race to Tokyo? Like what have you, what, have you grown? Have you changed? Oh yeah. Has your view of filmmaking changed? Yes. To all of those things. And I would even say probably one of the biggest lessons I learned is just that like, there's no easy way to do it. Like it's gonna, t- especially with documentaries and especially if you don't have um, a, you know, sponsor or studio backing and you're just like starting from idea, then it's going to take a long time and you just have to be willing to, um, to do that. You know, one of the things we tried to do was because Jared is a sponsored, you know, Paralympian, he's got huge sponsors, the biggest sponsors in the game. And so we thought that we could sort of align the story with them and maybe, you know, as part of, you know, their supporting of him, they could support the film and we could actually get it made. Only problem is we didn't really think about the fact that, you know, when contracts like that are negotiated, they're, you know, everybody is kind of pushing it to the line. What can, you know, what, what can we, what can the give or take be that, you know, maximizes the most value for everybody. And so when you come in later and you're like, okay, well, here's this other documentary thing that we want you to kind of think about. They're kind of, by the way, I'm here. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, Hey. Uh, they're kind of just like, uh, it just doesn't work for them. It just doesn't make uh, sense in their, in their model. So, so yeah, I think the biggest, logistical or financial thing that I learned maybe was there are grants out there, you know, and that's how documentaries are made. And people tried to tell us this over and over. And I was like, no, no, we've, we have a different (laughs) way to do it. Back off. (laughs) We're going to reinvent the wheel. Yes. Literally. (laughs) Literally. I mean, we're going to create a formula so we can do this over and over again. And you know, there, there is a formula and it's called grants. And so you should, you do that <laughs> uh, is that would that be a recommendation for like aspiring not only you know documentary filmmakers but i guess filmmakers in general right yeah i mean i think there. i mean i know there's you, a lot of grants there are and i know like europe is has a lot more than we do i think but um but yeah i think for any type of of film 
you know, indie filmmaker, I think there are probably some grant opportunities out there for sure. So what was, I, I mean, I'd imagine going to Tokyo, but I, I, I'm, I'm willing <laughs> for some surprises here. What was your favorite thing about doing race to Tokyo? Uh, going to Tokyo. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. yeah. I was about to say, <laughs> I mean, it really, it was, the, it was really cool. Um, <clears throat> but no, I mean, I would say the people I met, like uh, meeting Ken, um, meet, getting to know Jared better, um, getting to see uh, what they were doing and just like learn about like, because part of the making a documentary is the fact that you have to sort of, you know, these people know what they're doing in their own lives, but then you come in as sort of this third party and you see what they're doing and you almost get to put it into context to, uh, you know, kind of bring a new light to it. And so the most interesting thing was just that these were the two people that I was doing that for. And so getting to know them and seeing, you know, what they cared about and how their personalities worked with each other was probably the coolest part. And all the noodles. I mean, there's just so many noodles in Japan. <laughs> Every other meal is noodles. But do it yeah. so well. I, you know what blew my mind was uh, when I saw a lot of the, the rough cuts and all that was seeing uh, the, 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 like, the fanaticism that like Jap the Japanese people have for like someone like Jared Wallace. Oh yeah. Like yeah. I, that was it's it's like the Beatles walking at like people legitimately freak out about Jared like he's a fucking Yeah, doc, I mean so. like he's uh he's definitely way more popular there than he is here and I don't know why. <laughs> I guess because like because the games are going to be happening there in 2020, I guess. And like one of his biggest sponsors is Toyota. And so they're a Japanese company and they're also head of the, you know, the, the global sponsor of the games. So I feel like that has something to do with it. I mean, but the, you know, Sony's involved. They, they have major events in like the city streets where they shut down like all of Shibuya city, like the biggest crosswalk, busiest crosswalk in the world and set up this, uh, you know, this track for, Paralympians, you know, the, the, from different countries to come and just stand there. And then they invite all the people around and they just, uh, they have a race right there in the middle of the street. And it's stuff like that, that gets people excited. You know, we don't do anything like that here, really. No, not really. We just do like a, I don't know. We kind of talk like about it. We made us, we made a centennial park. That was cool. In Atlanta. That was, yeah, that wasn't for I the mean, Paralympics, you know, it was for the Olympics. And we have yeah. It. Well, I mean, okay, you can't have it both ways, Travis. <laughs> you know, fucking pick a lane on this. <laughs> hey, um, that's fun. <laughs> are you? Uh, so, are you going to stick with documentaries? Is that like a niche that you've kind of like found a home in? Um, I think, <clears throat> like right now, uh, just doing this new like series that I'm working on for YouTube. Plugging it. Uh, hey, it's called Relief. There you go. It's called Relief. You guys, check it out. Um, I think what's really cool is that, you know, for that documentary, um, for Race to Tokyo, I was telling sort of someone else's story through my perspective, whereas this is more like some just things that I'm just genuinely really interested in that I get to like kind of investigate and call people about. And the medium that I happen to be able to use is, you know, filmmaking and, and, and it is more of a documentary. Um, but I, I do feel want to challenge myself in the future to do things that are maybe more conceptual, more like less literal, you know, less interviewee. Like that would be a huge challenge for me that I would, you know, I'm going to want to try to do one day probably. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, okay. What, wait, hold on. You, you plugged a thing and then you didn't explain the thing. Yeah. Okay. What is, <laughs> what's relief? Okay. What is All this? Right. So relief is the show that I do in my house. Now that coronavirus is here. <laughs> uh, um, no, but it's basically, it's a six part series that is going to kind of, it's kind of exploring what modern communities look like. So like how we interact with each other, what, what role the community plays in like easing the suffering of the individual and, um, you know, sort of how relationships work. So Yeah. Um, so episode two just dropped and, uh, or will drop later today or tomorrow. And, uh, yeah. Is it on a schedule? It is on a very loose schedule. Okay. okay there yeah. we go. Well, by the time our podcast drops, that means episode two will be yes. up on YouTube. Now, is it on, uh, if, if you search relief, like, will it come up? Like, is, yeah. 
Okay. On like on YouTube, well, you'll so you'll have to put like you could search relief and it might come up now that it's been up long enough, but like relief episode one or relief episode two, that kind of helps get you there. Okay. Um, yeah. And then w- once you find the channel, people listening, hit subscribe, and then you won't have to go through that again. It'll just be delivered directly. Please. To you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just in case you weren't sure how YouTube Just works. smash that's, that subscribe that's button. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Fucking jam that subscribe. Yes. Punch it. Punch it. Yeah. 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 Um. So is it just because of COVID-19, like being quarantined, that's made you start this? Or was this a thing on the back burner? Like, was there like a nugget of this somewhere else? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, uh, I've i always thought about community a lot, well, at least since I was like, I don't know, probably 20 or something like that, just because I grew up in a like Christian household. And then I was like pretty quickly dissuaded from a, being a Christian. I just didn't didn't jive with it really and i found that like outside of church it's really hard to find communities of people who just genuinely care about like the same things and like hold the same values and like want to see one another thrive um and so i'm just trying to figure out why that is because you know the way that our political system is meant to work is that we get together around issues and things that we care about. And we remind the country what our values are. Like the, the country doesn't necessarily, we're not supposed to just let politics run rampant. We're supposed to take an active approach. And so um, I think the lack of community has something to do with the apathy that people our age feel toward becoming engaged in politics. And I just want to know what what's up with that basically i mean you could always just go on twitter and argue that's like yeah <laughs> a oh, safe go to oh, yeah <laughs> facebook <laughs> is my argument platform of choice it's good good battleground there <laughs> yeah. yeah that's that's get... that's family and friends that's like the most direct way yeah. to piss people oh yeah off. i like to go straight to the source the people who caused yeah, it yeah, you... You can argue with someone and then go check out pictures from their last vacation, yeah. pictures of their cats, their, yeah. what they've really eaten. Really humanize them. Yeah. yeah. You, That's right. If, if you oh, get really mad, twist you, can, the knife. you can like unlike everything. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Then they know it's permanent. I'm kind of interested because they came with this new like care of you. You guys saw that. What What is it? It's like it's like when you go on Facebook now, you can choose to like, like, love, laugh, blah, blah. And now there's one that's care. And it's basically a, an emoji hugging like a little heart. Sweet. It's adorable. Oh, boy. It's okay. adorable. Oh boy. So I'm just wondering, like, well, I'm wondering know, how nuanced they're going to get with these things. Well, that's a good question. I mean, it's better than the day, like, when you used to only be able to like things, it was always weird because it'd be like, my grandpa died or something like that. And then people are, like, liking it. And, like, you knew what they meant. Oh, uh, yeah. But the yeah. it just was kind of weird. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah. It could be a time where... I mean, any human emotion could be represented Whoa. by yeah. some sort of emotion. You don't even need your own. Here. No. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. You don't need your own emotions. You just have to, you don't have I, to carry that baggage. Facebook's got it for you. Uh, you can only feel angry, sad, happy, <laughs> or care. That's your, that's, I feel That's care. the new range of human emotion. <laughs> that's how, how you feel today? Mark Zuckerberg came up with it. <laughs> The future <laughs> is care. You need, oh, that could be the next documentary right there. So what about care? Now, Why do we? <laughs> or do we not? <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, for you, is there a, a topic, a documentary topic that is like your white whale that you're like one day, like that's the one that I want to, I want to tackle. Is it care? It's care care oh, okay. it's care oh, and it's boy. anger and it's sadness and it's liking things a little bit but not too much no exactly. um not too excited. no i guess i really i do feel like one of the next things i'm going to go after is probably and i'm going to touch on it a little bit in this series because i do think like relationships are at the center of kind of everything and so mm-hmm. along the path one of the six episodes is going to be i think about information integrity and trust and so i think what i'll probably possibly possibly do after this is maybe take that topic and spin it off into something else so just 
what is the role that trust plays and, and this, the information integrity plays in the fabric of a society and a community? Mm-hmm. Uh, because I mean, you know, that and privacy are probably two of the most um, interesting, threatening um, topics that uh, that we're we're gonna have to deal with, like our generation is gonna have to deal yeah. with, and, and the people younger than us, uh, because it's obvious that the people talking about it in Congress and uh, in the White House have no idea how technology actually works. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, <laughs> privacy. I think is privacy and communication. I would say it's an interesting one, especially moving like technology has changed the game. Like you, I can't even picture if you would say that 20 years ago like that would almost sound too abstract now now you say it and i'm just like oh yeah, yeah. totally like i 100 percent see what you're talking yeah, about that's no, true like 20 years ago it's like communication what are you talking about privacy go lock your door yeah. what are you talking yeah. about yeah exactly that that would be the take it'd be like yeah just close your yeah. blinds like, yeah, it's <laughs> not that simple uh, anymore i mean uh, drones are everywhere these days <laughs> the damn all the drones and uh <laughs> what is it nsa with like the uh supercomputers that can like house everything yeah. you know they're probably they're probably listening to this you know they don't have to wait for us no. to release this episode it's happening damn you got that vip I, I, pass I love it. yeah no, <laughs> <laughs> some hard-hitting content <laughs> they get to find out that one quibby is a quib <laughs> gary look that up are they right yeah yeah is that a terrorist see- thing <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're on a watch list we, we accidentally hit on some like like code word blueberry pie Qu- quibby's too close to jihad i don't like what's yeah. going on there yeah, there's a bunch of eyes in it and a q i mean who uses that yeah, yeah. what the hell's up with that <laughs> would, would you ever take on a project that's not your own like would you produce uh, like a documentary that isn't yours? It, uh, well, I, I guess it would come down to, there's three categories. Number one, do they pay me? Number two, do I find it important? And number three, I can't think of a third thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably so those two like... and, Oh, number three, can I do it? Like, am I actually capable of doing it? So it's like two of the three, I guess, have to be there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, what if, uh, you know, I were to tell you that uh, some podcasters happen to have some ideas for documentaries that. You know, okay. I'm listening. What are they? Could potentially meet some of those. It's so, like, uh, you know, essentially you just get to say if you, you'd produce it or pass okay. it. Okay. Oh, great. Know? I love this game that we just made up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now we'll, we'll get like a thing in post to like, I don't know, like we'll, jazz it up. Yeah. We'll jazz it up. Like that? Yeah. Yeah, please there, don't. There it is. Don't don't add anything yet, please. Um, you're gonna mess up the post <laughs> process. Um, so yeah, you just have to decide. You know, would I produce it or am I gonna pass on it? Uh, Matt and I have a couple ideas. I'll, yeah. Matt, do you want to do the first one? Sure. Um, you know, we, we were talking earlier about reinventing the wheel. Um, no need to. No need to do it. Uh, one of the biggest documentaries of the last twenty years, Morgan Spurlock, Super Size mm-hmm. Me. I submit for your approval a film called Supersize You, where we focus on people who are trying to get as fat as they possibly can for whatever okay. reason. Fetish thing. Maybe they just don't want to, you know, go to work okay. anymore. Okay. And uh and so you need and you're asking me if I would produce this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Would you produce uh, it? how much I mean, is there a budget? What are we talking? Uh I mean, what, that's mostly fast food for just like the food budget. Yeah, I mean, yeah, dollar menu so a couple simple. times a day. So simple. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, ba- in, in light of the facts, I'm g- I'm going to decline. I'm going to have to decline that. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oof. It's just something Oof. about. I, it's I have a the thing. I, I have a sure thing was... against McDonald's. I just don't. I don't trust them. Uh, you know what? You know what sucks? I bet part of that comes from Super Size Me. <sighs> so I got tanked by the very <laughs> thing that I tried to rip wow. off. That's deep. Uh, we it's just the way the universe works sometimes. It's Damn tough. it, Spiro. All right. I, I, I have Tony. one here. Um, I, I think, you know, like I love documentaries that are very niche, uh, very specific. So I have one here about uh, 
so it'd be a deep dive into like music teachers uh, that have like scammed children <laughs> for like thousands of dollars, maybe millions. Who knows? It depends on the scale and who we can get uh, to talk with us. Mm. Um, and then, and then I think we could call it uh, playing a minor. Ooh. Okay. Right. Yes. Just, just, oh, just the title. The title's clever. Yes. I mean, I mean, this is one of those decisions I'm going to regret and. <laughs> oh, oh! It's happening now. I'm already regretting it. But I, I heard a producer there. But I said yes. So write it down. Keep it. Save it. I'm keeping That's that. A, I will. A, uh, I'll get like a little, you know, thing to you, like an EPK. You know, turn the budget. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Do you have Do you have your first school location that we're? I mean, did this happen? Not, yet? not even a little bit. I. You know what? It's just. <laughs> The title. What is the like, nature yeah. of these <laughs> scams? I mean, are we talking like broken instruments? Are we talking like giving them music that like plays the brown note? And so everyone in the audience just shits their pants the second they start going. I mean, what kind of scam are we talking? You know, that's I the beauty that's of it. To, that's what you need to invest That's in. the beauty. We find out what the scam right. is. Like maybe there's a kid out there that can only sing flat, mm. you know? Teacher didn't teach him how to, you know, hit anything right. Just because she, that's a scam. she didn't like him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be he so had the funny. voice of an angel, like deep down within, but she just didn't yeah. like his like his vibe. Yeah, picture Adele, but only flat. Cool. That's you know that you'd lose a lot of money on that deal. Yeah, if if, if yeah, Adele I mean, was you, you flat, th- yeah, I think her yeah. her career probably would not have been what it was. <laughs> you would think that the band would just tune down a half step. But... Yeah, that's how music works. All right, Matt, <laughs> Matt, p- pitch a second one. All I'm right, feeling good about this one. one. Yeah, that one kicked ass. I'm your opponent, and even I could. That was a good one. Uh, so I, I, I like documentaries. We were talking about communities. I like, um, like one of my favorites of all time, King of Kong, which explored people that were into retro arcade games and things like that. So I like this sort of fringe, uh, you know, kind of eccentric community focused documentaries. So I'm thinking Rodeo Clowns. Mm. We we do a deep dive on what it's like to be a rodeo clown, their home life, what it's like in and out of the ring. Uh, and I've got a couple names. I mean, we, I'm open to suggestions, but these are the ones I had. No Bull, uh, Clowning Around, Ooh. and then I, I think this this is the one. This is like the Oscar bait title, Not My First Rodeo. Oh, okay. That is good. That's a good one. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm intrigued, okay? Um, I might even throw a, a name into the ring no pun okay. intended hey into the ring could work all of that but right also now. deep dive because they di- don't they dive into barrels you know what they do I'm pretty sure they do so, so are you producing it or are you passing it what's going on here <clears throat> i'm open to further discussions Okay, oh. I'll take it. It's like being waitlisted to exactly. a college. I'll take it. I'll put like a half ding okay. in there or something. Yeah. That's fine. Actually, I'm, I'm going to say that to both of you. I'm I'm not ready to pull the trigger on either of them. No, we're not taking okay. my. You know, we're not taking my ding back. But I'm hey, not going co- back. together, that's a full that ding. Is. That is a full ding. That's yeah. a full ding for both of us. Hey, thanks, Ty, for, thanks for giving us a ding. Right, ding. What's your um, second one? So uh, this is another one, like a really niche thing. Um, I mean, all these are going to be pretty niche, but. So the idea is to kind of dig into the underbelly of the white supremacist art scene in America. What? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Does that exist? Yeah, exactly. I, I was it, wondering that too. <laughs> it, you know what? It could. We can start looking into okay. it now, and then we can call it painting without color. Ooh, I like that. That is a. You got me. If that's a thing that exists, me. that's a brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Netflix. What? Get Netflix on the yeah. phone. <laughs> the power's going to my head now. That I'm. Right. I I am uh, I am I I imagine it being a lot of juggalos. It could be. I'm not against yeah. that. Yeah, there, there's got to be. Some... Not saying no to anything yet. Juggalo rhymes with no, and that hat. Oh no! Oh. That doesn't. Wow, that took a okay. turn. That was cold. All right, you know what, Matt? Fucking, you do yours. I guess. I got my last one. All right, so um. You know, not everything has to be exciting like uh, Rodeo Clown. You know, so, <laughs> um, that's why I, I'm pitching a 12-part series about one of the world's most versatile metals. It's called aluminum. For the uh, UK, we'll call it aluminium. Mm. 
but it would be like a Ken Burns style. A lot of this. The first time I encountered aluminum was in Art 4. I was, <laughs> I was stunned by how light it was and just how versatile and how good it is for everything. And I'm also thinking while that voiceover comes, that's an old recording, we just kind of slowly zoom in on like a, a piece of aluminum. <laughs> and each part is two hours, so it's actually like a 24-hour document. Oh. Oh. This could be so good. you so you're you. saying the whole documentary will be a slow dolly in to a sheet of metal with a voiceover. I, mean, I I think I think we would have I mean that would be most of it, but we would have different different sheets of metal, maybe some like aluminum baseball bats. If just you know that, that that's sort of the idea is like aluminum is just so versatile. We need to highlight the different ways it's used. Cans. Okay. Perhaps. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say yes. Here's why. Okay. It's wow, it's okay. lightweight. It's durable, it's valuable, and it sounds really cheap to make. Uh, the, the movie sounds really cheap to make, so I'm in. Yeah, don't sleep on aluminum. Don't do it. It's literally uncomfortable. Right. You will not want to sleep on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, in every sense of that phrase, don't sleep on aluminum. Correct. Ty, can you beat a twelve-hour, uh, a twelve-part, twenty-four-hour documentary about aluminum? Yes, yes, because you know what? I'm gonna go drama. Forget history. No one cares about history. They want something dramatic in a documentary. Okay. Uh, that's what you know. Tiger King. You had Carol Baskin. You had someone you hated. Mm. You had someone you loved. It was you know it was the ebbs and flows of drama. I loved it. So I think I think we take a darker turn here. We dig in to the underbelly of the bartending world, you know, and we, we explore, you know, the, the domestic abuse crisis in the bartending community, right? And then we call it shaken, not stirred. Ooh, that's good. Huh? That's good. And um, it's got a name. It's got that's a strong premise. It's got a name. And I am a fan of drama really pulls at the heartstrings. You know, you got tears, you got tears, you got black Shaken, eyes. Shaken, not stirred. But does that imply that the audience is not stirred by the story? What if it was shaken and stirred? It could shaken be that. Shaken and stirred I could work with. Shaken and stirred. I guess, yeah, you know, I was approaching at it like, you know, they just don't leave the, the relationship. But it could be, I like that because in the audience, They're you stirred. know. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Gonna say, I'm, I'm flailing say here. Yes. Say yes. Yes. Oh man. Okay. I don't know what that adds up to. We'll figure that out in post. We'll just keep adding things. What, Can what, I get? What is it with you and underbellies? I'm pretty sure every one of these concepts was like, we'll we'll discover the underbelly. <laughs> oh, it is. I, I think Ty did say that. I never. Did I one. say? Did I say? Oh, I did say underbelly. Uh, did I guess you know. I like the, the the ones where it's like, you know, it's like you think the doc's gonna be happy at first, where it's like, yeah, and it's like the family pictures and like everything was good. Until it wasn't, and then they do the close up of the kid's face, where it's like, "Ooh, that that that, that face could be taken either yeah. way." You that's know, Keith that is Morrison, a serial killer. That's the Keith Morrison Dateline crutch. Exactly. Yeah. No, okay. Careful with crutch. Let's not throw. Oh, I'm sorry. Around. I'm sorry. Crutches aren't bad. They help people. All right. We're uh, running low on time here, and I want to make sure we get all the uh, the proper plugs. Okay. So, uh, Travis, obviously, we 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 touched on. Uh, relief you can find that on youtube is there anything else you want to plug any social handles or anything uh you can follow me at travis pressed on uh like a button you know not like a, it's just travis pressed on it's all one word very hard to describe mm -hmm. instagram handles I've, i'm now noticing um yeah. if you want to follow me there you can but really yeah i just want people to watch relief and tell me if it's good or bad <laughs> right you heard yeah. it just comment yeah Put a good, put a bad. Thumbs up, thumbs down. But actually, no, better yet, put a producer to pass it. Ooh, yes. Oh, I'll know. Let me know that's you how listen. I'll know you listened. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you know you got. they got to the end of the, the whole interview. Yeah. Is that all we got? It's just an Instagram thing? I mean, not like... I mean, relief is it, man. You know? I mean, what... Relief and Travis pressed on. I feel kind of cheated. What else should I plug? What here. else should I plug? Where can they see Race to Tokyo? How about that? Are you serious? Yeah. Can't? We talked about a thing people okay, can't fine. watch. Okay, they could watch it. Uh, they could go to vimeo.com forward slash electric puzzle and they will find Race to Tokyo with the English subtitles. Thing is, I am not, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not putting it out there a lot. So, um, you know, they can watch it. They can watch it. Yeah. All right. You, you got it, guys. Race Follow those directions. You can see it. <laughs> 
follow, follow it out. Figure out the spelling of Electric Puzzle. You can watch Race to Tokyo. Check out Relief. Thank you, Travis, for being with us. Thank today. you, guys. And that was Travis Preston. How about that? Yeah, how about that? Sounds like I didn't even listen to it when I like described. Like, how about that? Like, how about I'm- it? Does sound like we recorded? <laughs> Believe it or not, folks, this outro was recorded after the interview. It after. sounds like maybe it wasn't. Like this was just a stock thing we put in. But believe it or not, no. If you can believe it, no. the intro and outro, we're recording it together, and I'm sitting here relaxed and drinking a martini better than you right now. Yeah, totally. There he's taking a sip yep. of the martini. Yep. How was it? It was, you know, I'm not a big martini drinker. I, I broke, you know, tonight, and I'm I'm remembering why I don't drink a lot of martinis. Because it's not good. You know, I'm white trash, Matthew. I grew up in South okay. Florida, and I'm All not right. gonna hide it here. And it's like I feel like a martini might be too rich for my blood. Really? Yeah, it's very boozy tasting. I need something like, like you know, I love PBR a lot. Okay. I don't know why it tastes sweet. I think that's why I like it a lot. Is that right? Yeah, I like some of those. Uh, like PBR is like the the hipster favorite beer, but it has like that reputation. Like it was big a long time ago, and now it kind of came back. I I, I kind of like those. I'll yeah. admit, like for a while, dude, I was trying to get on the craft train. You know, I just couldn't keep up with it. Like I was on. People, oh, dude, I was heavy on the craft beer train. I was you know what I don't? Deep. I don't like about the craft beer train is that when you ask people what kind of beer they like, they'll just say, "Craft." I like craft beer. Yeah, I like craft beer. You like any craft? Dude, I've had some horrible craft beers. Mm-hmm. Like all that one means, with salt water in it. What the fuck? Yeah, it was like yeah, we put salt because it was like a like a smaller Florida brewery, and they're like yeah. We want it to taste like Florida. And I'm like, no one wants to drink fucking salt water. Oh, dude, that's the thing. Like, like I've had great craft beers and stuff. Like, there's a good uh, number of breweries for, for uh, uh, an area the size of where I live. There's quite a few. And they're, they're good, too. But, dude, there are some, and especially the, the scourge of, uh, like, I like some IPAs. But that's another one where people just go, oh, I like it. The hoppier, the better. It's like, no, dude, they're just covering bad beer half the time. Yeah. When it's super hoppy like that, like a little, you know, I, I like to taste different things. I like, I like things layered. I, Cigar a City in Tampa was really good. I always enjoyed them. And then here in Georgia, I'm a really big fan of, uh, there's Tropicalia by mm-hmm. Creature Comforts. And then there's like this brewery over Marietta called uh, Red Hair Brewing. And they make like uh, like almost German style Radler beers, which it's like uh, half beer, half grapefruit juice. Mm-hmm. I fucking love that stuff. Really? Yeah. Oh. It's like in the Shandy family. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, it might be a Shandy. I don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not that much of a nerd, so if someone listening oh, is that much of a nerd, please, yeah. you know, tweet tweet at the show. Yeah, yeah. Every now and then, like, I, we're recording this just after Cinco de Mayo. Just after. And uh, as a child, for me, the beginning of summer was Memorial Day. Now, as an adult, the unofficial start to summer for me, Cinco de Mayo, because that's usually the first time I buy some Mexican beers. Dude, I, that is one of my favorite. I saw your post uh, on Instagram. You were like oh, loaded up. You had a bottle dude, of tequila. Got you had some a bucket tequila, full of got beer. some Modelo's. Dude, it, it's, uh, it's that crisp like Mexican lager. Your Coronas, your Souls, your Modelo's, Pacifico, Tecate, Dos Equis, all of them are great like just sitting outside by the pool on the beach toss a lime in there ty is there anything better have you ever have you done like a loaded modelo or uh usually it's like a loaded corona but it can be any spanish beer. you put some tequila on the top you let it no i take well, that shot of tequila right out of the beer one time at disney world i had a, a beer with it i forget what it was but it had a tequila floater okay what wait, yeah. is it wait is it in the beer they just put like a splat now. Like, are you talking where like they? They put drop it like, like in the shirt? neck of the beer. So essentially, what how I mean, how I do it at home is I'll take a big old gulp and then I load up some tequila right through the neck of the beer and then drop a lime in there and then you got nice. like you got essentially like a hand grenade of a beer. That does sound quite tasty. I will. Say, I did. Dosakis used to make one 
now we're probably getting too into the minutia of, <laughs> of <laughs> beers <laughs> but uh they used to make one called uh Dose- they might still make it. i haven't seen it in a long time it's called doseki's azul oh yeah that was good uh yeah it was made with uh, agave agave which of course for all you uh spirit aficionados you'll know that that's what uh tequila is made from <laughs> yeah i mean i used to like it i was a fan of that one i you know i i love i love this episode the fucking trajectory we're taking what we started off we planned out time at uh the long-term goals of time yeah um and then uh before we go public with the company um and yep. then we moved on to conspiracy theories with pandemic yep uh which which this- Segway nicely into the guest. It did because we, it documentary yeah. to documentary, and then you know we had some fun with Travis, and now we are just fucking sitting here getting lost in the weeds with beer. Couple dudes just Couple chatting dudes. about brews, talking about conspiracies, talking about brews, dude. Welcome dude. to the Time Mat Show. Stupid <laughs> I wish I had an, like an air horn. That's when I would have played that. Like, welcome to the Time Mat Show. Like yeah. that's that's what I wanted to do, but I didn't have the the means. I know I w- I don't have it either. I yeah, don't have, have any. To fix that. I know I need to get. I have this. That's good. That's noisy. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It'll I work. just It'll I work. just love the trajectory we've taken though. It's been this has been probably one of my my favorite shows of like the wide ranging topics of yeah digging into conspiracies and then digging into craft beer. Yeah, dude. Seriously. No, I, you know we're, we're gonna get so time. much hate on what I said about pandemic. Like I can feel it. Oh yeah, like well, this yeah, would be the what? live take of people listening. See, they'll be upset. They'll be upset, but then when they start hearing us talking about beers, and it'll turn it right around. They'll be like these guys. Yeah, yeah. Then they'll be like, <laughs> "That's right." They'll be like these guys. Great taste and brews. Which I guess this is a great time to let everyone know that uh, Ty and Matt's show, uh, we did just get a new sponsor, sponsored by Monsanto, uh, generously donated to the show, a uh, large sum of money. So, you know, look into that if you want. Or not. <laughs> or not. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe don't. Yeah, don't. <laughs> and then next week, we have our guest, Judy. Oh, that would be great. Wouldn't that be? Actually, I'm, I, we should reach out to her. Because, yeah, I mean, if I mean, I'm going to sit here and talk all this shit, I mean, fuck. Bring her on. Yeah, come on. Like, give her the opportunity to rebut. Hold on. Let's see. Does she have any? I'm going to look it up now. This is uh, this is the part of the podcast where we Google things. And... Yeah. No, this is. Well, it's the best part about podcasting is the fact that you get to listen to people. I mean, come on, dude. Fucking the people listening to this are probably the same people that do, like, the YouTube videos where they watch, like, couples that's just fair. go through their day on YouTube. You remember those when they were so hot? Yeah. Hey, me and my girlfriend are going to Target today, and then they get in like wacky adventures and get kicked out of Target. Oh my god, that and eight-year-olds that make millions of dollars opening like packages. Okay, that makes you want to jump I will. Off a I will no, I will never fucking. That is called entrepreneurship, and I respect their the hustle, craft, the grind. I can't find. Wait, is there not like a website for? Can someone reach out to Judy Mikovitz yeah. and also give me the pronunciation, the pronunciation yeah. of her last on, name? On, on behalf of the matchup, we'll give you the time matchup. We'll give you a credit in the next episode as our guest booker if you make contact. Yeah, I mean, fuck it. We'll send you like a coffee mug with Ty and Matt on it or something. Uh, let's not commit to coffee mugs. Oh, boy. Why? What's wrong with coffee uh, mugs? Oh, they're just they're, they're hard. They take up space. Let's start out easy with like uh, an e-greeting. Okay. Well, like an e We'll record a voicemail for you. How about that? Yes, if you still have. We'll sing "Happy Birthday." <laughs> we'll, we'll 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 start out like, "Hey, how's it going?" <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, they're not here at the moment, so leave a message after the beep, and then they'll just be cracking up so hard they probably won't be able to leave a message. But <laughs> I look. I mean, I don't think it'd be impossible to get her on because we look. No. We got a fucking presidential candidate on that. We did. That we did, yeah. I don't. I don't. I it's don't. A presidential uh, podcast. Yeah, seriously, I would lead with that. Like, maybe you've heard of us. We've had presidential candidates. Phil yeah. Collins. Maybe you've heard of Phil Collins. Yeah. Hey. Maybe. This has been fun. I've enjoyed this. It has. This was. You know, I, I don't like to pat myself on the back. I know I did do it earlier in the episode. 
uh, but I am going to do it again. Take the opportunity. Uh, it was a good yourself. one. We did a good one. Yeah. Uh, Ty, Ty uh, let the kind folks know where they can find you oh, on the boy. internet, not oh, in person. Boy. Oh, boy. Uh, if you want to send me any kind of hate messages or tell me I'm a fucking idiot for my take on Plandemic mm-hmm. or – Give me some evidence. I will. We'll keep talking. I don't care. We'll talk about yeah. it. I'm all about conspiracies. Uh, you can find me at Twitter at Ty Colgate or Instagram at Ty dot Colgate or TikTok at Ty Colgate <laughs> or Gmail at Ty Colgate or whatever the fuck you want to send. Yeah. I mean, send me a letter. I mean, if you want my address, we'll talk about it. We'll discuss it over direct messages. Go I won't say it over this. Well, all right. No, probably. Probably for idea. the best. <laughs> Yeah, you can find me on the tweets and the Instagram and TikTok for that matter, uh, at Matt underscore Regal. What do you say, Ty? Should we take it on home? You didn't. Hold on. You didn't do. Oh, did you do the underscore? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's why I did. I do the underscore. I know. I'm sorry. I, I, what am I doing? Fact checking you. You know what you're uh, doing. I, I know my. You're. I know my Instagram. Guy. Oh, thanks, Ty. You're the that was best. great talking to you. Oh, it's been fun hosting this with you. Yeah. Until hey, next be time. sure. Hey, make sure you're wearing your mask. Okay, I'm wearing it. Do you have your gloves? Yeah, okay. You got your gloves? I, I am. Okay. Yeah, and be sure you're social distancing too. I'm done. I'm done. Look, I don't want <laughs> to be right, by buddy. anyone. I don't want to no, be by anyone. Either. No. All right, buddy. See you later. See you, bud.